Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 30 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 20% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code i5314. Hello, everybody, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 82. This is the show where we scour the app store for handy news and apps and tips and tricks so you don't have to. I'm Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iOS. Welcome. This show is so chock full of crap, it'll knock you straight into next week. Hold on to your butts. Number one, let us rejoice, iPhone world. The startup screen of death is no more. Hopefully no more anyway. That's because Apple finally pushed out iOS 7.1. This is the first big update since iOS 7 last year. And this addresses that random restart issue that so many of us had on an almost daily basis known as the springboard restart. So cheers to that. You're also going to notice that Touch ID works like a charm now. Major cheers to that. However, iOS looks and feels a bit different too. Let's go through a few of the changes. New rounded buttons show up if you make or receive a phone call or you turn off your device. Some nifty slider fade behavior too. Speaking of buttons, if you jump into settings, then go to general and accessibility, and then you toggle on something called button shapes, you now have some more control over how your navigation buttons look, either arrow based or gray boxed, kind of nice. Also in accessibility settings is the increased contrast feature. Now you can reduce transparency in the dock and your folders. You can darken the overall color palette slightly or even bring down the brightness a bit by reducing the white point. These are minor tweaks, but worth exploring for yourself. Passcode settings are no longer buried under general. They're in their own settings category right above privacy. And CarPlay isn't really officially a thing with iOS yet, but the settings are already showing up. They're in settings, under general and restrictions, my CarPlay's toggled on by default. Can't wait. So these are just some of the features in iOS 7.1. I could go on and on, but you don't have all day. I understand. One thing I do not like, and I know I'm not alone here because I've seen people complain on Twitter for the last mm, 48 hours or so, is the new caps lock nonsense on the keyboard. I tend to yell a lot via text or on Twitter, and so I toggle on my caps lock on and off constantly. What the hell, Apple? Could this be any less clear? I don't think it could. Number two, a new feature that actually really deserves its own spotlight, see what I did there, is Siri. It used to be that when Siri thought that you were done with a command or dictation, she'd start processing your request. But we're humans and sometimes we pause to think or whatever. So it could be kind of frustrating to use Siri. Now with iOS 7.1, Siri supports what's basically push to talk. So if you're thinking of the perfect message to send and you need a moment, as long as you're holding down that home button, Siri will patiently wait for you before she starts processing whatever your request is. Tell me what the weather's gonna be like in five days in Petaluma. It should be nice on Monday at 12 p.m., up to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, even if you've already started an interaction like text my boss, then you can hold down the home button while you're thinking of the perfect excuse to take Friday off again. Hey, Leo. I really kind of want to go to the beach on Friday, so I'm not going to come in. Thanks. And Siri won't interrupt you until you're absolutely done. Thanks, doll. Number three. Hey, you know what we haven't covered in a while? Accessories. Everybody loves accessories. This week's must have is the Mophie Space Pack. This is essentially an iPhone case that's both an extra battery 
and extra storage. You just attach the Mophie around your phone, like so, and instantly you get 1,700 milliamp hours of extra battery. That means roughly 10 extra hours of video playback or a huge boost in your iPhone's battery life if you're out and about all day and nowhere near your charger. Happens to me all the time when I'm on vacation or just a nice long walk. Not only that, but the Space Pack also adds an extra 32 gigabytes of local storage. So basically, you could double your 32 gigabyte iPhone capacity, if needed, for a ton of photos, videos, or thousands of songs. Pretty impressive. Now, since technically it works as an external hard drive, Mophie Space also has a companion app that makes sense of what you've saved on that extra storage pack versus what's on the iPhone itself. Plus, easy sync capabilities for stuff like videos or even a backup of your camera roll. And of course, you can connect the space pack to your computer via USB to transfer files and charge the battery. Now, I've had Mophie packs over the years. They've absolutely saved me on battery life. And with extra storage, the space pack is basically a no-brainer. It's definitely gonna add a little bulk and a little weight to your iPhone, but it's made really well and 100% worth the price, I-M-H-O. By the way, that price is $150. This episode of iFi for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. At Shutterstock, you'll find the perfect image or video for your next creative project, like a website, a publication, an advertisement, a video, any kind of project at all. You can choose from over 30 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and even video clips. Contributors to Shutterstock are incredibly talented people. They're professional photographers, they're artists, plus Shutterstock reviews each image before adding it to its library so you know that everything has been vetted. Shutterstock adds 20,000 images every single day. So each time you go there, you're gonna find something new. They also have flexible pricing. You can choose an individual image pack or a monthly subscription for the best deal. And you can download any image in any size and pay one price. Shutterstock gives you the images you need to bring your creative projects to the next level. And they make it really easy with sophisticated search tools. You can search by subject, color, file type, emotion, and shareable lightboxes are great for teams. Save images to a lightbox gallery and then access them anytime and share them with team members. An award-winning iPad app is fun to use. Just search on the go and use it to display images during your presentation. Now that I've got space on the brain, let's search spacesuit on Shutterstock. Look at all the results. I'm ready to go nuts with all my options here. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. No credit card is needed. Just start an account and begin using Shutterstock and imagine what your next project could be like. Save a few favorite images to a light box and review them later. When you're ready to purchase, use the offer code I5314 and new accounts will receive 20% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com and for 20% off new accounts, use the offer code I5314. Thanks to Shutterstock for their support of i5 for the iPhone. Number four. So here's a fun little duh tip that Leo and I showed off on iPad Today. You do watch iPad Today, right? We talk about all things iPad and we wear funny hats every Monday. Twit.tv slash IPT. It's like the best show ever besides this one. Anyway, on iPad Today we discovered a very handy way to selectively delete messages in an iMessage conversation. You just tap and hold one of the text blurbs. You choose more, then make sure it's selected, and then you can delete that message without affecting any of the other messages. Now, this of course can change the way that the history of a conversation reads. I immediately jumped to ways that I could rewrite history so that my friends appeared to say things out of context. I don't really know what that says about me, but honestly, I can't really think of an actual practical reason that I would use this feature besides for blackmail. If you know of one, please let me know at iviva.twit.tv. By the way, this little duh tip has been around since iOS 7 launched last fall. Finally, number five. I know it feels like a world away, but we're already starting to see leaks for what's ahead in iOS 8. Yes, just accept it. Yesterday on my daily news show, Tech News Tonight, by the way, have you subscribed to that show yet? It's really good. I act like a news person. I tell you all about the day's big tech stories and I talk to very important people. Twit.tv slash TN2 and subscribe if you love me. Anyway, 
On yesterday's show, I spoke with 9 to 5 Max Mark Gurman about a brand new Apple Maps in store for iOS 8. It sounds like, according to sources, Tim Cook and the team are ready to take on Google Maps for real after Apple Maps became kind of the laughing stock of directions when it was first released back in iOS 6. Now, according to these anonymous sources, Maps and iOS 8 will finally utilize transit directions with help from companies that Apple has acquired, like Hopstop and Embark. We've both covered those apps before positively on i5 in the past. Not just that, but improved coverage for indoor mapping and enhanced car integration. Can't wait for that. Another rumor coming from 9to5Mac just this morning is the possibility that iTunes radio will be broken out from a tab inside the music app into its own standalone app to better compete with the Pandoras and the Spotify's of your home screen. Now this isn't a sure thing, but I certainly hope it happens because iTunes radio is actually a really great product. But it's really easy to forget about. When's the last time you used it? All of my music comes from streaming services these days, Pandora and Ardio and that sort of stuff. So when I think of the music app, I think of local music storage that I know I don't even have. So I'm never in there. And so I'm never using iTunes radio. If Apple preloads it in iOS 8 and gives it prime real estate on the home screen, it's a genius way for Apple to remind us that iTunes radio exists. Well, that about does it for episode 82 of i5. Wasn't that fun? If you ever hear or see of a great app or a trick that we've gone over and you want to go back over it or pass it along to someone cool, just hop over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where you'll find links and where you can subscribe to this fine show with the feed of your choice or just add our show to your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Questions, comments, feedback, all that good stuff. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane. This is i5 for the iPhone, and I'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.